I'm Tyler Suters in the Energy News Center. Last week, President Obama stated a very objective goal for carbon capture and sequestration technology. He wants to see five to ten commercial scale projects here in the U.S. by the year 2016. And he signed a presidential memorandum designed to achieve exactly that. Joining us now to talk about the opportunities here is Bob Hilton. He is Vice President for Power Technologies for Government Affairs with Alston. He has been with us before. And Bob, it's good to have you back. Thank you. Nice to be here. Uh, the president has talked about this focus on carbon capture and storage ever since the election cycle. Uh, it's something that both parties generally agree upon. What do you need to see in terms of direction? Now? We really needed to see what this task force creates, which is a focus and a sense of priority. Mm -hmm. You know, we're reaching the level where we're getting into the, I'll say, commercial projects. We, we're fortunate in terms of the CCPI, the, coal, the Clean Coal Power Initiative, mm -hmm. that Alstom has two projects under that, which will be commercial scale. But to drive these projects at that level, we need federal support. We need the government to, to, to intervene. It can't be done solely on private money, which is the way we've operated to date. Mm -hmm. I want to read a little bit of what this presidential memorandum outlines. And quoting here from the president, the task force shall develop within 180 days a proposed plan to overcome the barriers to the widespread cost-effective deployment of CCS within 10 years. And then he goes on to his goal of bringing five to 10 commercial demonstration projects online by 2016. Uh, commercial demonstration, Bob, what does that mean to you? Because that's a key qualifier uh, in the entire carbon capture uh, technology and research. As Alston views it, a commercial demonstration is, is a plant at scale, mm -hmm. typically 200, 250, 300 megawatts of flue gas equivalent. Because at that level, from a techno technological perspective, we can then go to any size plant with the equipment that we need to do. We'll have proven it with the right equipment at the right scale mm -hmm. continuously. Mm -hmm. And this is the same focus that I think that, that the task force has, that that level, we, as I said, we have two projects that'll be at that level under the CCPI. So we're really pleased that Austin will have at least two, hopefully, of the other 10 they, they're talking about. Um, now, Jointly. Clean, now, Clean Skies, Bob, has been to one of these projects. That is the Mountaineer plant in West Virginia, a joint project along with AEP and EPRI as well. So far, the early returns have been very uh, rewarding for you in terms of what you expected to see at various milestones along the way. Right. That's, uh, so far, Mountaineer has, you know, as, as our, our AEP's chairman likes to say, has exceeded expectations. Um, it has gone extremely well. And that, that's what brings us to the ability to move from where we are there, which is roughly 50 to 60 megawatts thermal, to the larger 250 megawatt plant, which is the DOE involvement from the, from the CCPI phase three. How many eyes, so to speak, are on this one particular plant? It seems to be the flagship that is underway right now in the U.S., but what about a global scale? Uh, everybody's watching this. I mean, it is in front of all the efforts that we have. Um, it, it, even in advanced amine and chilled ammonia, where this, this is the most progressive. It is the first fully integrated plant. I mean, we're capturing CO2, we're compressing it, and, and then we're, we're sequestering it on the site. So it is unique, it is, it is the cutting edge of the technology. You and I have discussed before, Bob, the Pleasant Prairie project in mm -hmm. Wisconsin, a much smaller scale mm -hmm. carbon capture and storage, uh, again, a joint project that, right. that Alstom was involved in. Uh, very successful as well. You hit or exceeded the numbers you were shooting for. Correct. What are the difficulties, though, as you scale up, going larger to larger on all of these projects? Well, what happens is, you know, you, your first Wisconsin was what we call a proof of concept. And that's the first time we really ran on flue gas. We ran continuously under a, a true operating scenario on a power plant. Now you move to larger equipment. You begin to be able to test the economies you can get on energy. You begin to test the, the full integration. And, and that's the last step when we go to the commercial one, because then you're fully integrated with the power plant. And there we try to take advantage of all the savings we can get, not maybe just project or, or do the, you know, the process, plus we think we can save some more. You know, that's, that's the true commercial test, which is why we move progressively through this from, from the 5 to 7 megawatts to the 50 to 60 to the 250. I want to tap into your experience, Bob, with uh, the government affairs side of things, the federal policy. Uh, right now, we know that behind closed doors, the Kerry Graham Lieberman Senate climate bill is being crafted. Clean coal technology, carbon capture and storage will have to be a key element of this to get enough Republican votes. Where do things stand on a carbon capture and storage or a coal title right now as you understand them? 
Well, we, we don't have a lot of information. I mean, at this point in time, we, we hear that the bill is, is going to be out in March. Mm -hmm. um, we're pretty optimistic in terms of dealing with them, that they're dealing with the issues that, that we really see as important. You know, funding those, those initial demonstrations to, to dealing with, with hopefully the, the, the liability issues that are going to go with sequestration to the incorporation of all that into the bill. We're, we're optimistic based on the drafts, some things, language we've seen in conversations we've had, that this, is, this piece is going to get general acceptance. I, I don't think it's going to be the controversial part of the bill. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, what are you looking for there? Is it funding or is it uh, the government acceptance and, and the uh, drive toward an emphasis on CCS? It's, I think we're looking for a couple of things. You know, the emphasis on CCS is obviously important. Mm -hmm. Funding, yes, because you know, we're fortunate. We basically are in good position on two commercial scale demonstrations through the DOE. But that's not the 10 that everybody wants. So there's going to have to be more to come. It's going to have to come out of that bill or some, some other initiative to get to 10 commercial scale demonstrations. Uh, we need that. We need to them to address the things that are going to be the core issue to what we're trying to get at, which is long-term liability, poor space ownership, the things that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's where you put the CO2. I mean, we can catch it, but if we don't have the things in place to, to sequester it, then we have a problem. Bob, final question involves the prediction that the head of Alston Power, Philippe Joubert, has made very publicly. That is that 2015 is the time for commercial scale carbon capture and storage technology. He and Jim Rogers are really the two private sector leaders who have been out in front on this. Does this validate his prediction to some degree? I think it absolutely does. Mr. Joubert has been adamant since we started our program in the early 2000s and really made it concrete in about 2004, that 2015 is the date we had to be ready to be commercial for deployment if we were going to make the real objectives that we all have for 2020. And now with, with the President you know, moving to sort of, I'll say, consolidate this around 17 percent reduction, it, it becomes absolutely critical that we deploy in that time frame. So I think absolutely Mr. Jobert is more than validated. Bob Hilton is Vice President for Power Technologies and Government Affairs with Alstom Power. Bob, it's always good to have you with us. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. I'm Tyler Suters, and you're watching Clean Skies News.